Hello friends, welcome to my channel Ihira Techies. In this video regarding .NET 7 NDT Framework Core. The topics are how to handle and execute store procedure using NDT Framework Core and also executing SQL queries for complete DML actions. Let me go to my application. So this is my .NET 7 application. For the database point of view, I am using SQL Server. Using database first approach, I already created my database context. So next we can start our implementation. So as I mentioned, I'm going to cover the complete uh, DML actions. We can start from the select. Here I have created the separate procedure for each and every DML actions. First I'm taking this get customer. So it will return the list of customer information. For doing this implementation, first I'm going to create one controller. We can use this API and MT API controller. Let me provide the name is associate. I thought of provide a customer, but I am already having one customer controller. And creating one constructor. Here we can inject the database context. Next, let me create one action method. And this is the get method. Next, let me form one SQL query. Actually, we need to execute our procedure. So let me take the same and included it here. We can use the await operator because this is the synchronous method. Here we need to choose the model. So what I'm going to do. So in this procedure implementation, I just use select star from table customer. So we can use the same model, table customer already I have it. Table customer from SQL draw. And here we need to pass this query. Dot to list asynchronous. Okay. Okay, this is fine. If data double equal to null, we can return like not found. So in this else scenario, we can return the same data. So let me run this application. Okay, this is our method, get all. I am trying to execute this one. So it is working fine and it is returning the data also, okay? So this is the one scenario. So next in this real-time scenario, so in this procedure we may have a number of giants and some logics. So let me take one more procedure. So in this procedure, I am taking all columns from this table customers and additionally included one status name and provided the default value is active, okay? So in this real-time scenario, we can include some uh, giants. For the time being, I'm just added like this, okay? So let me execute this procedure also. So we can copy this procedure. It's having one small difference. Let me explain. Because we have to get all the column information. We can provide like get all custom. Okay. Okay. So now if I'm trying to execute this query, it will return the data 
still my table customers have the limited columns okay actually I'm expecting this status name also so what I'm going to do let me create one custom model already I have created the name is customer model okay so here we can see all the fields so additionally we have this status name also okay so in this controller side so instead of this table customers I am going to include this customer model it's not coming so the reason is uh, the particular model is not belongs to our database context so I am going to create a new data set here I mean the DB set so let me provide customer model okay so I can say customer detail we just added now I am going to use this reference okay so now if I am trying to run this one definitely I will get the error okay the reason is for the concept of entity framework core we should have the primary key column for all the tables okay now we have included a new model it's don't have any primary key then we have to specify it don't have any key column so then we have to provide like keyless attribute okay so let me save this one okay other things are same only let me run this one and we can see the response let me run this one See, we are getting the status name also okay so the concept is very simple so the first thing is based on this uh, store procedure response we have to create one model then we have to include the particular model in this database context to file so after that we have to use the same uh, DB set in our execution area okay. so this is the way we have to execute the store procedure that will return some values okay and the next thing is we have to move on the other DML actions create update and delete before that let me tell you how to execute the plain SQL queries also okay so that is very simple it's not going to take much time end with we can include a query okay let me copy this query instead of this query we are just replacing okay okay again we are getting the same information only so as of now uh, we have just executed the plain queries and the store procedure so next let me explain how to pass the parameters okay so let me copy the same command I mean the same code we can say get by code okay and it is having one parameter that is code okay and our query should be where at code okay this is our query so again we are passing it here so now we will get the single data so let me provide first our default okay up to this it's fine but the thing is uh, we have to pass this parameter right so what I'm going to do SQL parameter new SQL parameter and here we need to define this parameter and we have to give the value okay and we need to pass the parameter also so let me run this one get by code we need to provide some values okay for not four let me provide a 0 1 3 okay 
now it is returning the value it is returning the single customer information okay so next we can move on the insert functionality so I have a separate procedure that is create customer the same procedure I'm going to use for insert and update action so let me create the functions here so once we completed this create other functionalities are not going to take much time http post create and it is having one parameter that is the table customer object and the next thing is we need to form the query so this is the procedure and it is having lot of parameters okay let me include all the parameters one by one the first one is code then name then email next to phone credit limit active tax code and the final one is type okay so this is all about our query and the next thing is uh, we need to form the parameters so now we have a bulk of parameters okay so we can have array again the code and we need to provide the value so value we can get it from this object okay I just added here the same way I'm going to include all the parameters one by one so the type is add in this procedure we are not expecting any response uh, we are doing this insert operation we are just passing the data only so what I'm going to do so instead of this customer detail so I'm going to use the execute XQL query command execute XQL raw synchronous okay let me remove everything and pass to this query and also this parameter let me remove everything okay this response are not needed so let me save this one and also running this application so the last value is 016 so I'm going to provide the code is 017 so let me execute this one okay I'm getting the response is 1 and if I'm checked the last entry we have in our table okay so the insert functionality is working fine and the same way I'm going to execute once again this is the primary key column expecting the error see now I'm getting the 500 response it is saying that so it is saying the violation of primary key error okay so now it is fine I'm going to insert one more record so the response code is 200 so now it is working fine so next we can work for the update so the update also almost the same so we can change the HTTP verb is put basically in this put method we will pass the key variable so I am going to pass the code also as the parameter so anyway we will get from this object so I just included string code okay some typing issue that's fine so instead of adding code from this object I directly taken from this parameter 
and this one let me provide update so we can check in this procedure yeah it's the update only so let me save this one so first using this get by code method I am taking the data for 0 and 8 okay next we can use this update option I'm just replaced and in this code I am just added 0 and 8 so name I provided some value and a phone this limit so basically we have this tax code okay tax code 2 so let me execute this one okay again the status code is 200 and we can verify it here in this get by code see so the data are updated okay so now our update function also working fine and the final one is delete so let me copy this one delete and instead of this put we can change this into delete and it is having only parameters code and our procedure delete customer I just uh, added it here and we can remove other parameters we can just uh, remove other parameters so the same query is fine so instead of that we can add a direct SQL parameter also so let me run and confirm okay zero night let me execute this one so getting the 200 response see up to sounding we have the 18 got removed okay so the same way if I'm providing 17 also so again the same response so can check from the SQL itself see the 17 also got removed okay so now our delete functionality also working so now we have covered all the procedures for insert and update we have used this create customer and uh, for the delete we use the delete and this get customer and get customer custom both are returning the data okay and finally I am going to complete how to do this insert actions using the normal queries instead of using the direct procedure the steps are same only anyway let me explain first let me taking this query so we can take this same create okay I just changed it here so up to the tax code we have and the next thing is parameters we have this code name email phone credit limit active and a tax code so the additional parameter is not needed and other things are same only okay so let me run this one zero mile getting 200 response and we can check in this table see so it is working this is the way we have to execute the store procedure and SQL queries using this entity framework core okay so now we are in the end of the video still if you have any doubts or clarification please post in the comment box and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel so in my next video we can see one of the interesting topic thank you thanks for watching